Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty awesome little budget laptop that I recently picked up on Amazon. This is the Lenovo IdeaPad 315. It's the Ryzen variant, and these are actually up on Amazon right now for $699. This one here is packing an AMD Ryzen Zen 3 5000 series 6 core CPU along with the GTX 1650. And the 1650 that's in this laptop does use GDDR6 RAM. When it comes to the display, we have a 120 Hz 15.6 inch IPS. It's definitely not the best one that I've seen in a gaming laptop, but then again, this is a budget gaming laptop. It does have a backlit keyboard. Unfortunately, it's not RGB. It's only a single zone with white LEDs. We have a number pad over on the right hand side and it also comes included with a 135 watt wall charger. And real quick, here's a look at that keyboard lit up. Unfortunately, it's not RGB. Some of the pictures that I've seen for this specific laptop do show that it's an RGB keyboard, but it's only a single zone with white LEDs. When it comes to I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we have our power input, gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI, and a USB Type-C 3.1 port. Moving over to the right-hand side, we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and two more USB 3.1 ports. For the price, the specs actually look pretty decent. This is using the Ryzen 5600H. We have 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock 3.3 GHz with a boost clock up to 4.2, and I have seen this CPU go up to 50 watts. When it comes to the GPU, we have an NVIDIA GTX 1650, and like I mentioned, this is using GDDR6 RAM. From the factory, with the $699 price tag, we get 8GB of DDR4 running at 3200MHz. It's running in single channel right now, but we do have two DIMMs in here, so we can easily upgrade to 16 or even beyond. It's really up to you. A 256GB NVMe SSD, and this is running Windows 10 Home right out of the box. I wanted to pull the bottom off and just check out the upgradability. As you can see here, we got a pretty decent cooler setup for the CPU and GPU combination. This should be sufficient for what we have here. This is our stock NVMe SSD, but we do have another M.2 slot over here so we can upgrade the storage that way. Or if you want to throw a 2.5 inch drive in here, it does come with all the accessories to mount up an SSD. It comes with the SATA adapter, ribbon cable, screws, and a mounting bracket, so it'll be really easy to upgrade the storage. We have 8 gigs in this unit here for that $699 price tag, but we can easily upgrade. And for this video, I'm actually just going to take this up to 16 gigs since I already have the bottom off of it. I really wanted to see how this would perform with that extra RAM. And I will leave a link in the description to a little bit of extra RAM. You can actually pick it up for pretty cheap given that we only need to use one more DIMM here. So we're going to go with two 8 gig sticks, making it dual channel and bringing it up to 16 gigs. While I still have this on the desk, I figured I'd go ahead and test one game before we get into benchmarks and everything like that. Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, ultra settings, runs super smooth on this setup. That 5600H doesn't have an issue with any game that I tested, and this GTX 1650 can definitely push a lot of this stuff at 1080 over 60 really, really well. For this one here, 1080p, ultra settings, we got an average of 75 FPS, which is more than playable in my opinion, especially given that we're at ultra settings. But this laptop does contain a 120Hz display, and I think at a low medium mix you could reach that, but personally I don't mind playing this at around, you know, 70 to 80 FPS ultra settings. Settings. The stereo speakers built into this laptop do get plenty loud, but they can get a bit tinny. There's not a lot of bass here, and when it comes to these budget laptops, I wasn't expecting a super sound system in this, but it'll definitely get you by. And remember, we also have that 3.5mm headphone jack right on the side. Alright, so here we are. I've been up and running for about 5 hours, no issues at all. As you can see, we have that 5600H, 6 cores, 12 threads. I did add that extra 8 gigs of RAM, so we're running in dual channel with 16 gigs. We have the built-in Radeon 7 graphics for that 5600H, and the NVIDIA GTX 1650. This CPU will run up to 50 watts I've seen with my testing. It's a 45 watt design, but it can definitely get the job done. Now in this video, we're going to run some benchmarks, we're going to test out some PC games, and finally, we'll get into some emulation. Then we'll talk about CPU temperatures and battery life. So uh, first up, let's hit up the benchmarks. Geekbench 5 is actually looking pretty strong with a single core of 1408, multi 6674. When it comes to Cinebench R23, we got a total multi-core score of 9,617. Keep in mind, we have 6 cores, 12 threads. I think this is looking pretty good for a 45 watt unit. When it comes to 3D Mark, Night Raid came in with a 30,312. Firestrike, 9,188. And Time Spy with a 3,933. 
So these scores aren't looking bad at all for the price paid for this thing. I was kind of hoping that we'd hit over 4,000 in time spy, but you know, I can work with this. And when it comes down to it, these are just benchmarks. Now it's time to see how this thing can handle real world gaming. Here we have Call of Duty Warzone, 1080p with a high normal mix. I was really hoping we could just hit up high with this, but it does dip down below 60. But with a mix up like this, you can get an average of around 76 FPS out of this game. Injustice 2 is still one of my favorite fighting games. We definitely need more on the market, but here we are at 1080p high settings. It's running really constant at 60. I haven't seen any kind of dips, and there's a chance we could mix this up with Ultra. GTA 5 at 1080p with a high normal mix, I got an average of 121 FPS out of this, and I probably should have just went up to some very high settings here, but overall performance is great. Dirt 5 really pushes these GTX 1650s, and at 1080p medium, we still can't hit a constant 60 with it. It will dip down every once in a while, so you will have to mix this up medium low. Another one that gives these GPUs a run for its money is Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, low settings, we're at 100% resolution scale, we got an average of 47 FPS. So what I wanted to do was take the resolution down just a bit. So here it is at 900p, low settings, and we still dip below 60. Best bet for this would be 900p, low, and around 80% resolution scale. You'll get over 60, it won't look as good, but it'll be a playable experience. So with some PC gaming out of the way, it's time to see how this little laptop handles emulation. And first up, we have Wii U using SimU, Vulcan Backend, 1080p, Breath of the Wild, 60fps. Now even just on the 5600H and the integrated Radeon 7 graphics, it'll run this game pretty well at 720-30fps, but adding this GTX 1650 definitely takes it up. Moving over to PS3 using RPCS3, Vulcan back in, 1080p, we have Skate 3 here and it's running at 60. Every once in a while in a crowded area I did see it dip down to around 58 FPS, but if I didn't have that counter on screen I probably would have never noticed it. And by the way, if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, we're close to 50 watts on the CPU side of things. And since this emulator is such a CPU hog, we're utilizing around 75% of that CPU. The temperatures did rise up to around 84 degrees Celsius, and the same thing goes with the next one you'll see. These are just very CPU intensive emulators. And finally, at least for this video, we have Zinnia, the Xbox 360 emulator. Here's Red Dead. I do have V-Sync off. I was hoping that we could run this close to 60, but you're going to kind of be stuck at 30 with this game here. At 30, it's still an enjoyable experience, but it would have been nice to be able to go up to 60 with this one. When it comes to CPU temps, this thing idles around 43 degrees Celsius, average gaming 71 degrees Celsius, and the maximum that I got this to hit with the 10 minute Cinebench R23 test was 88 degrees Celsius. We actually didn't thermal throttle through all of the tests that I ran. Battery life on these gaming laptops can vary depending on what you're doing, but with this thing here, video playback at 1080p, you can get around 8 hours of battery life out of it. That's just using the integrated graphics on that 5600H. 2D light gaming on the integrated graphics, you could probably stretch around 4 hours out of it. And 1080p 3D gaming at around 60 FPS, high ultra settings on this laptop here, you're only going to get around an hour and a half of battery life out of it. That's just how it is with these gaming laptops. 
Overall, given the price tag of this laptop, I do think it's a pretty decent deal. At $699 with that 5000 series 6 core 12 thread Ryzen CPU and that GTX 1650, this will get you by with some really decent 1080p gaming performance and amazing emulation performance like you saw in this video. I mean, it'll do PS3, it'll do Wii U. I didn't show off anything lower end because it's just going to run it. I mean, Sega Saturn, PSP, Dreamcast, you want to upscale up to 1440p, it's going to do it just fine. We have plenty of power on the CPU and GPU side of things when it comes to emulation. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more, maybe picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this laptop, just let me know in the comments below. I don't mind making another video. But that's it for this one. And like always, Thanks for watching.